Hello and welcome to another teaching from 119 Ministries. Our ministry believes that the whole Bible is true and applicable to our lives today. If you would like to learn more about what we believe and teach, please visit us at testeverything.net. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button and subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button below. We hope that you enjoy studying and testing the following teaching. Have you ever asked a question about the Bible and received conflicting answers? That is certainly a frustrating experience. There are no contradictions in the Bible, but man's interpretations don't always line up with what the Bible says. Perhaps the best way to answer a biblical question is to let Scripture speak for itself. This simple study asks questions and allows Scripture to answer. Before we begin, from time to time, you will hear our Savior's Hebrew name Yeshua used instead of the more common transliterated form, Jesus. In the first century, our Messiah was known by the name Yeshua, which means salvation. Yeshua is the shortened form of Yehoshua, which means Yahweh saves, or Yahweh is salvation. Thus, every time we say the name Yeshua or Yehoshua, we are affirming that salvation is from Yahweh through His Son. Also, every time that LORD, in all caps, is mentioned in the Old Testament, you might hear us say Yahweh. In the Hebrew Scriptures, translators replace Yahweh with LORD in all caps. We are simply bringing it back to what the Hebrew actually says. This is because we encourage learning about the depth and blessings of learning the Hebrew language, the language our Old Testament was written in. Therefore, we include some Hebrew in our teachings. So, let's begin with the questions and see what the Bible has to say. What is sin? 1 John 3.4 Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. If we love God, what does He want us to do? John 14, 15 If you love me, you will keep my commandments. How does Scripture define love? 2 John 1, 6 And this is love, that we walk according to His commandments. This is the commandment just as you have heard from the beginning, so that you should walk in it. Who did we receive this commandment from? 2 John 1.4 I rejoice greatly to find some of your children walking in the truth, just as we were commanded by the Father. Is this commandment new? And if not, how long have we had it? 2 John 1.5 And now I ask you, dear lady, not as though I were writing you a new commandment, but the one we have had from the beginning, that we love one another. What message have we heard from the beginning? 1 John 3.11 For this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. When was the beginning? Genesis 1.1 In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Has the word really been from the beginning? John chapter 1 verses 1-5 through in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. 
The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. How do we love God, and what does loving God really mean? 1 John 5.3 For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not burdensome. Really? God's commandments are easy? Deuteronomy 30.9-16 Yahweh your God will make you abundantly prosperous in all the work of your hand, in the fruit of your womb, and in the fruit of your cattle, and in the fruit of your ground. For Yahweh will again take delight and prosper in you, as he took delight in your fathers, when you obey the voice of Yahweh your God, to keep his commandments and his statutes that are written in the book of the law, when you turn to Yahweh your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul. For this commandment that I command you today is not too hard for you, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that you should say, Who will ascend to heaven for us and bring it to us? that we may hear it and do it. Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, Who will go over the sea for us and bring it to us, that we may hear it and do it? But the word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart, so that you can do it. See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil. If you obey the commandments of Yahweh your God that I command you today, by loving Yahweh your God, by walking in His ways, and by keeping His commandments and His statutes and His rules, then you shall live and multiply. And Yahweh your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to take possession of it. What is the whole responsibility of man? Ecclesiastes 12.13 The end of the matter, all has been heard. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. What are the greatest commandments? Matthew twenty two thirty seven through 40 And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, and with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. This is the great and first commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. If we love God, how should we feel about his commandments? Psalm 1, verse 2 But his delight is in the law of Yahweh, and on his law he meditates day and night. Psalm 119.35 Lead me in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Proverbs 29.18 Where there is no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint. But blessed is he who keeps the law. Did Yeshua abolish or remove any commandment from God's law? And what happens if we teach and act like he did? Matthew chapter 5, 17 through 19. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same, will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Did Paul abolish or remove any commandment from God's law, or did he agree with the teaching of Yeshua? Romans 3.31 Do we then overthrow the law by this faith? By no means. On the contrary, we uphold the law. How did Paul feel about the law? Romans 7.22 For I delight in the law of God, in my inner being. When Paul was accused of teaching against the law, how did he respond? Acts 21 And when they heard it, they glorified God. And they said to him, You see, brother, how many thousands there are among the Jews of those who have believed. They are all zealous for the law. And they have all been told about you, that you teach all the Jews who are among the Gentiles, to forsake Moses, telling them not to circumcise their children or walk according to our customs. What then is to be done? They will certainly hear that you have come. Do therefore what we tell you. We have four men who are under a vow. Take these men and purify yourself along with them and pay their expenses, so that they may shave their heads. Thus all will know that there is nothing in what they have been told about you but that you yourself also live in observance of the law. 
But as for the Gentiles who have believed, we have sent a letter with our judgment that they should abstain from what has been sacrificed to idols, and from blood, and from what has been strangled, and from sexual immorality. Then Paul took the men, and the next day he purified himself along with them and went into the temple, giving notice when the days of purification would be fulfilled and the offering presented for each one of them. When Paul was again and continuously accused by the Pharisees for breaking the law of Moses, did he clarify himself again and again of what he believed, just like in Acts 21? Acts 24 Neither can they prove to you what they now bring up against me, but this I confess to you, that according to the way, which they call a sect, I worship the God of our fathers, believing everything laid down by the law and written by the prophets. So Paul kept stating he observed and taught what Moses wrote when he was accused of not teaching what Moses wrote? Acts 25. Paul argued in his defense, neither against the law of the Jews, nor against the temple, nor against Caesar, have I committed any offense. So, if Paul taught what Moses wrote, did Moses write that there is a different law of God for converted Gentiles? Numbers 15. For the assembly, there shall be one statute for you and for the stranger who sojourns with you, a statute forever throughout your generations. You and the sojourner shall be alike before Yahweh. One law and one rule shall be for you and for the stranger who sojourns with you. Really? So if Paul was teaching what Moses wrote, he also had to be teaching the same for the converted Gentile or the foreigners? Leviticus 19. You shall treat the stranger who sojourns with you as the native among you, and you shall love him as yourself. For you are strangers in the land of Egypt. I am Yahweh your God. Did Yahweh really intend for converted Gentiles to follow the same law of God? Leviticus 24. You shall have the same rule for the sojourner and for the native. For I am Yahweh your God. Did Paul keep God's feast days too? Acts 18. When they asked him to stay a longer time with them, he did not consent, but took leave of them, saying, I must by all means keep this coming feast in Jerusalem, but I will return again to you, God willing. And he sailed from Ephesus. Again, did Paul keep God's feast days? Acts 20, verse 16. For Paul had decided to sail past Ephesus, so that he might not have to spend time in Asia. For he was hastening to be at Jerusalem, if possible, on the day of Pentecost. Did Paul teach others to keep God's feast days? 1 Corinthians 5.8 Let us therefore celebrate the festival, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Did Paul also follow and teach the law of Christ? Galatians 6 verse 2 Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Did Yeshua teach something different from the Father's commandments? Are Yeshua and the Father the same? In other words, is there a difference between the law of God and the law of Christ? John 10, verse 30. I and the Father are one. John 8, 28. So Yeshua said to them, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He and that I do nothing on my own authority, but speak just as the Father taught me. John 8, 19. They said to him, Therefore, Where is your Father? Yeshua answered, You know neither me nor my Father. If you knew me, you would know my Father also. John 14, 24. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. During the Great Tribulation, what are the characteristics of those whom the dragon goes after? Revelation 12. Then the dragon became furious with the woman and went off to make war on the rest of her offspring, on those who keep the commandments of God and hold to the testimony of Yeshua. Did Yeshua state that receiving the sword of truth would bring peace or division? Matthew chapter 10. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be those of his own household. 
Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. What does the sword do to people? Luke 2, verse 35. And a sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. What is the sword? Hebrews 4, 12. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. What did Yeshua state would happen if we follow his commandments and walk in his path? Mark 13. And you'll be hated by all for my name's sake, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. What does it mean to endure? Revelation 14. Here is a call for the endurance of the saints, those who keep the commandments of God and their faith in Yeshua. How do we know if we know him? 1 John chapter 2. And by this we know that we have come to know him, if we keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, in him truly the love of God is perfected. By this we may know that we are in him. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. Should believers do what is right in our own eyes and follow after our own heart? Or should we just simply follow his commandments? Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 8. You shall not do according to all that we are doing here today everyone doing whatever is right in his own eyes. Ecclesiastes 11 verse 9 Rejoice, O young man, in your youth, and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Walk in the ways of your heart and the sight of your eyes, but know that for all these things God will bring you into judgment. Numbers 15 Not to follow after your own heart and your own eyes, which you are inclined to whore after. Should we be careful not to add or take away from his commandments? Deuteronomy 12, verse 32. Everything that I command you, you shall be careful to do. You shall not add to it or take from it. Deuteronomy 4, 2. You shall not add to the word that I command you, nor take from it, that you may keep the commandments of Yahweh your God that I command you. Should we serve, worship, and remember God in the same ways that false gods have been worshipped and remembered? Deuteronomy chapter 12. Take care that you be not ensnared to follow them after they have been destroyed before you, and that you do not inquire about their gods, saying, How did these nations serve their gods, that I also may do the same? You shall not worship Yahweh your God in that way. Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 2. Thus says Yahweh, Learn not the way of the nations, nor be dismayed at the signs of the heavens, because the nations are dismayed at them. Deuteronomy 12, verse 4. You shall not worship Yahweh your God in that way. Will he have the same commandments during his reign when he returns? Isaiah chapter 2. It shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the house of Yahweh shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be lifted up above the hills, and all the nations shall flow to it. And many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of Yahweh, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and shall decide disputes for many peoples. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. Will we be celebrating the Feast of Tabernacles when the Messiah returns? Zechariah 14 Then everyone who survives of all the nations that have come against Jerusalem shall go up year after year to worship the King, Yahweh of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Booths. And if any of the families of the earth do not go up to Jerusalem to worship the King, Yahweh of hosts, there will be no rain on them. 
And if the family of Egypt does not go up and present themselves, then on them there shall be no rain. There shall be the plague with which Yahweh afflicts the nations that do not go up to keep the feast of booths. This shall be the punishment to Egypt and the punishment to all the nations that do not go up to keep the feast of booths. When Yeshua returns, will the dietary commandments still be relevant? Isaiah 66 For behold, Yahweh will come in fire, and his chariots like the whirlwind, to render his anger and fury, and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire will Yahweh enter into judgment, and by his sword with all flesh, and those slain by Yahweh shall be many. Those who sanctify and purify themselves to go into the gardens, following one in the midst, eating pig's flesh and the abomination and mice, shall come to an end together, declares Yahweh. In the 1,000-year reign, and extending into eternity, will we still be observing the Sabbaths? Isaiah 66 For as the new heavens and the new earth that I make shall remain before me, says Yahweh, so shall your offspring and your name remain. From new moon to new moon, and from Sabbath to Sabbath, all flesh shall come to worship before me, declares Yahweh. Can we be corrupted or spoiled by man's philosophy, traditions, and principles of the world? Colossians 2 verse 8 See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit according to human tradition according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. Did God give his people commandments to obey before Mount Sinai? Genesis 26 Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Are we heirs of Abraham's promise if we are of Christ? Galatians chapter 3 And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to promise. If we are heirs of the promise of Abraham, are we to follow the laws and commandments like Abraham did? John chapter 8. They answered him, Abraham is our father. Yeshua said to them, If you were Abraham's children, you would be doing the works Abraham did. What did Abraham do? Genesis 26 because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. What is faith? Hebrews chapter 11. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. What is works? Matthew chapter 5. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Revelation 22 Behold, I am coming soon, bringing my recompense with me to repay each one for what he has done. If letting our light shine is good works, which earns our eternal rewards or crowns, what is the light that we show before men? Proverbs chapter 6 For the commandment is a lamp and the teaching a light, and the reproofs of discipline are the way of life. Who is the best example of how to walk in the light, God's commandments and law, our way of life? John chapter 8. Again, Yeshua spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Why did Yeshua consider himself to be the light? John chapter 1. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Glory as the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Revelation 19. He is clothed in a robe dipped in blood, and the name by which he is called is the Word of God. If Christ is the Word of God, can the Word of God change? Hebrews 13.8 Yeshua the Messiah is the same yesterday and today and forever. Should we walk as Yeshua walked and follow the word as Yeshua followed the word? 1 John 2.6 Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. How do we perfect our faith? James chapter 2 
Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac, his son, upon the altar? See how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? You see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. What is the relationship between faith and works? James 2, 17 and verse 26. So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also faith apart from works is dead. So how do we show evidence of our faith, things not seen? James 2 verse 18. But someone will say, You have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. Is it possible for works to please God without faith? Hebrews 11.6 And without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who seek Him. After we realize that Yeshua is the Savior, what did Yeshua say we should continue to do to have eternal life? Matthew 19 And behold, a man came up to him, saying, Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? And he said to him, Why do you ask me about what is good? There is only one who is good. If you would enter life, keep the commandments. What did Yeshua state that we are to do in order to have the right to the tree of life? Revelation 22 Blessed are those who wash their robes, so that they may have the right to the tree of life, and that they may enter the city by the gates. Are any parts of the law or any commandments in Scripture not wholly good or just, and therefore worth abolishing? Romans 7 verse 12 So the law is holy, and the commandment is holy, and righteous, and good. Is the path or the way of life, which is also the light and the word, broad or narrow? And is it few or many that find it? Matthew chapter 7. Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction, and those who enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. Are we to be cautious of false prophets, and do false prophets appear like believers on the surface? Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. How will we know false prophets or teachers? Matthew chapter 7. You will recognize them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus you will recognize them by their fruits. What is the law's relationship to bearing fruit? And how will sinners fare in the judgment, even if they are in the congregation of the righteous? Psalm chapter 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of Yahweh, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like the chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For Yahweh knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. What is the good fruit that believers bring forth? John 15 By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. Will there be people that thought they were bringing forth good fruit, but actually were bringing forth corrupt fruit? And, if so, what happens to them? Matthew chapter 7 Not everyone who says to me, 
Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. What is the Father's will? What is iniquity? And is it still sin if we do not know we are sinning? Leviticus chapter 5. If anyone sins, doing any of the things that by Yahweh's commandments ought not to be done, though he did not know it, then realizes his guilt, he shall bear his iniquity. How do we know that we know him and know that we are in him? 1 John chapter 2. And by this we know that we have come to know him, if we keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, in him truly the love of God is perfected. By this we may know that we are in him. Who redeemed us from iniquity? Should we have faith, commit trust, and belief? And how will we act, and what will we be, if we are truly his people? Titus chapter 2 Waiting for our blessed hope the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Messiah Yeshua, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession who are zealous for good works. When the many false prophets arrive, will their teaching deceive many people into sin? How is this sin defined? Matthew 24 And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. Will these false prophets speak of God's ways, the way of truth, as evil through their own destructive ways that they invented? 2 Peter chapter 2 But false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you, who secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them bringing upon themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their sensuality, and because of them, the way of truth will be blasphemed. What is the way of truth that will be spoken of as evil by false prophets? Psalm 119. Your righteousness is righteous forever, and your law is true. Daniel 9.13. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this calamity has come upon us, Yet we have not entreated the favor of Yahweh our God, turning from our iniquities and gaining insight by your truth. Malachi chapter 2 True instruction was in his mouth, and no wrong was found on his lips. He walked with me in peace and uprightness, and he turned many from iniquity. Psalm 119 verse 160 The sum of your word is truth, and every one of your righteous rules endures forever. Is Yeshua the truth? And is it anything different than the Father's truth? John 14. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Yeshua said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. If Yeshua is the truth, which is also the word and law of God, what is the life and the way? What is the light? Proverbs chapter 6. For the commandment is a lamp, and the teaching a light, and the reproofs of discipline are the way of life. Proverbs chapter 13. Whoever despises the word brings destruction on himself, but he who reveres the commandment will be rewarded. The teaching of the wise is a fountain of life, that one may turn away from the snares of death. Good sense wins favor, but the way of the treacherous is their ruin. If Yeshua is the light, the truth, the life, and the way that we should all walk, did Paul also believe that the law and the prophets was the way? And did Paul also consider the way, the law, and the prophets? Acts chapter 9 and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any belonging to the way, men or women, 
he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Acts 19 verse 9. But when some became stubborn and continued in unbelief, speaking evil of the way before the congregation, he withdrew from them and took the disciples with him, reasoning daily in the hall of Tyrannus. Acts 19. About that time there arose no little disturbance concerning the way. Acts 24. Neither can they prove to you what they now bring up against me. But this I confess to you, that according to the way, which they call a sect, I worship the God of our fathers, believing everything laid down by the law and written in the prophets. Are believers grafted into Israel? Romans 11. If the dough offered as first fruits is holy, so is the whole lump. And if the root is holy, so are the branches. But if some of the branches were broken off, and you, although a wild olive shoot, were grafted in among the others, and now share in the nourishing root of the olive tree, do not be arrogant toward the branches. If you are, remember, it is not you who support the root, but the root that supports you. Then you will say, branches were broken off so that I might be grafted in. That is true. They were broken off because of their unbelief. But you stand fast through faith. So do not become proud, but fear. For if God did not spare the natural branches, neither will he spare you. Note then the kindness and severity of God, severity toward those who have fallen. But God's kindness to you, provided you continue in his kindness. Otherwise, you too will be cut off. And even they, if they do not continue in their unbelief, will be grafted in, for God has the power to graft them in again. For if you were cut from what is by nature a wild olive tree, and grafted, contrary to nature, into a cultivated olive tree, how much more will these, the natural branches, be grafted back into their own olive tree? If according to Paul the olive tree is Israel, do the prophets agree with Paul that Israel is the olive tree? Jeremiah chapter 11. Yahweh once called you a green olive tree, beautiful with good fruit. But with the roar of a great tempest, he will set fire to it, and its branches will be consumed. So, if Gentile believers are grafted into Israel, which is all supported by the same word, are they now considered citizens of Israel and even part of the covenants of Israel? Ephesians chapter 2. Therefore, remember that at one time you Gentiles in the flesh, called the uncircumcision, by what is called the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hands. Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Messiah Yeshua, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. With whom did God make the new covenant? Jeremiah 31. Behold, the days are coming, declares Yahweh, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, declares Yahweh. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares Yahweh. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. So are we to understand that we are all one body, baptized into one body, drink from the same spirit, with one shepherd giving us all one direction, regardless if we are Jews or Greeks? 1 Corinthians chapter 12. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. Ephesians chapter 3. This mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Messiah Yeshua through the gospel. John chapter 10. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. 
so there will be one flock, one shepherd. Is that one body called the church? Colossians chapter 1. Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. Ephesians chapter 5. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body and himself its Savior. So, is anyone that is saved by Christ part of this one body? And does the body have one head giving one set of instructions or two heads giving two different sets of instructions? Colossians chapter 1 verse 18. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. Ephesians chapter 3. This mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Messiah Yeshua through the gospel. Was the church a new invention of God at the cross? Or has it existed since the beginning and included all? Ephesians chapter 3. To him be the glory in the church and in Yeshua the Messiah throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1 which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Was Israel in the wilderness even called the church when the law of Moses was written? Acts chapter 7 verse 38. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai, and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us. How many gates lead into the new Jerusalem, and are they labeled as Israel? Revelation 21. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great high mountain, and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, its radiance like a most rare jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and on the gates the names of the twelve tribes of the sons of Israel were inscribed. On the east, three gates, on the north, three gates, on the south, three gates, and on the west, three gates. Is all scripture profitable for instruction in righteousness, training, correcting, and even rebuking? 2 Timothy chapter 3. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. So if all of this scripture is true, why do many teachers teach that Paul's letters have abolished certain laws? 2 Peter chapter 3. And count the patience of our Lord as salvation, just as our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you according to the wisdom given him, as he does in all his letters when he speaks in them of these matters. There are some things in them that are hard to understand, which the ignorant and unstable twist to their own destruction, as they do the other scriptures. You, therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, take care that you are not carried away with the air of lawless people and lose your own stability. Did Paul also warn the Greeks that this would happen? Acts 20. I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among your own selves will arise men speaking twisted things to draw away the disciples after them. Why are teachers permitted to teach such things? 2 Timothy 4. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions, and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. So, if we are part of Israel, whether natural or foreign, grafted in, are we to believe and obey all of God's commands in the Bible, defined as His law? And are we to obey out of duty or out of love? Jeremiah 31. Behold, the days are coming, declares Yahweh, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. 
not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, declares Yahweh. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares Yahweh. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And no longer shall each one teach his neighbor and his brother, saying, Know Yahweh, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares Yahweh. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Are God's feasts his feasts, or are they just Jewish things? Leviticus 23 Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the people of Israel and say to them, These are the appointed feasts of Yahweh that you shall proclaim as holy convocations. They are my appointed feasts. How long did God state in Scripture that His people should keep the commandment to keep the Sabbath? And when did God give us that commandment? Exodus 31 Therefore, the people of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, observing the Sabbath throughout their generations as a covenant forever. It is a sign forever between me and the people of Israel that in six days Yahweh made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Leviticus 16 It is a Sabbath of solemn rest to you, and you shall afflict yourselves. It is a statute forever. How long did God state in Scripture that we should keep the Day of Atonement? Leviticus 16, 29-31 And it shall be a statute to you forever, that in the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, you shall afflict yourselves and shall do no work, either the native or the stranger who sojourns among you. For on this day shall atonement be made for you to cleanse you. You shall be clean before Yahweh from all your sins. It is a Sabbath of solemn rest to you and you shall afflict yourselves. It is a statute forever. How long did God state in Scripture that we should keep Passover, unleavened bread, and first fruits? Leviticus 23. It is a statute forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. How long did God state that we should keep Pentecost, the Feast of Weeks, or Shavuot? Leviticus 23. And you shall make a proclamation on the same day. You shall hold a holy convocation. You shall not do any ordinary work. It is a statute forever in all your dwelling places throughout your generations. How long did God state that we should keep the Feast of Tabernacles? Leviticus 23. You shall celebrate it as a feast to Yahweh for seven days in the year. It is a statute forever throughout your generations. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month. Are we to keep God's law forever? Psalm 119. I will keep your law continually forever and ever. How should we respond to others with the truth? Ephesians chapter 5. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. Titus chapter 2. Declare these things, exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no one disregard you. 1 Timothy 5. As for those who persist in sin, rebuke them in the presence of all, so that the rest may stand in fear. Proverbs chapter 9. Do not reprove a scoffer, or he will hate you. Reprove a wise man, and he will love you. Jude 1.3. Contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. Do we need men to teach us how to understand Scripture? 1 John 2.27. But the anointing that you have received from him abides in you, and you have no need that anyone should teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about everything, and is true, and is no lie, just as it has taught you, abide in him. Did Yeshua tell his disciples to observe and do the law of Moses, but do not do Pharisee tradition and doctrine? Matthew 23. The scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat, so do and observe whatever they tell you but not the works they do, for they preach, but do not practice. Were those at Mount Sinai presented the same gospel as us? Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. 
Was that because Yeshua considered it bad that the Pharisees nullified the law of God as written by Moses? Mark chapter 7. And he said to them, Well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. You leave the commandment of God and hold to the tradition of men. And he said to them, You have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, If a man tells his father or his mother, Whatever you would have gained from me is Corban, that is, given to God, then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother, thus making void the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down, and many such things you do. So then, Pharisees taught the law of God, but in practice they were lawless. John chapter 7. Has not Moses given you the law? Yet none of you keeps the law. Why do you seek to kill me? So, if Yeshua taught that it was bad to nullify what Moses wrote, did Yeshua tell us to teach all nations to obey everything he commanded, which would include the law of Moses? Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 through 20. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Though this study just answered dozens of questions by directly using God's word, it likely generated dozens more. We invite you to visit us at testeverything.net where we embrace and teach the whole word of God. We hope that this study has blessed you. And remember, continue to test everything. Shalom. It is because of you, our generous supporters, who make it possible to offer these high-quality teachings completely free of charge. If you feel led to support 119 Ministries so that we can continue this effort, please visit testeverything.net and click on the Support 119 tab. Learn how you can partner with us to take the whole Word of God to the nations.